Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of What Negroes Like to Hear, Path 1. And to you, our esteemed viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals and other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, pass the truth to the next generation. Teach them early what we learn late. Malcolm X. And here are some things to note. Please do not dwell on what we are saying but also on what we are not saying. Always separate what the books and other materials we reference say from our individual opinions. Look for the books referenced, study them, read between the lines before challenging us. If the books conflict with what you know, then we challenge you to show us where what you know or believe is written down. And so, what do Negroes like to hear? Have you ever heard that Negroes enjoyed music so much that at the sound of music, they start dancing? Have you ever wondered if Negroes had no music of their own? When they claim that Africans sold other Africans, do you wonder how a man can be sold and he just stands there, like cattle or something? Have you tried to visualize how the actual trade was done, as in how you or any other individual or your sister or your parents could have just been sold. Even if they are captured in war, does it mean that children go to war as well? When they say books are written by the whites, do you wonder why they don't ask who makes the weapons they make wars with? Remember, if you were following this channel, you will see in the comment section the descendants of those whose forefathers sold their siblings through military raids, razzias, expeditions, those whose parents belonged to the Ruga Ruga, those whose parents are in the armies in West, East and Central Africa which metamorphosed from the slave trading terror groups. When they come here, all you hear them say is, these books were written by whites. But when you ask them who makes the weapons with which your parents kill people with, they run away or they start throwing tantrums or causing people or causing the channel or threatening everything you can think about. So those are our little questions for you before we tell you exactly what Negroes like to hear. So in summary, Negroes like to hear God said, God ordained it, it is God's will. All you need to sell an idea to a Negro is to say God said it or God sent you. They do not ever ask when and where God said whatever you claim God said. And by God here, we just take God to mean the supreme being that created the heavens and the earth. Remember, God is generic. So here we mean every God you can think about, the almighty creator of heaven and earth on this occasion. Because we can't explain the difference between the God of Judaism, the God of Christianity and the God of Islam or the God of... Um, Hindus or Babylonians or all, all the other gods. Well, we are talking of the one supreme being, not the gods of these religions. So if you can convince a Negro that you were sent by the creator of heaven and earth, whatever you are saying, he believes you. And that's what they want to hear. If you say any other thing different, you're wasting your time. And before we continue, you may have seen some fallouts from our message to our so-called African-American brothers and sisters not to make the mistake of relocating to Ghana and where we mentioned that Ghana today was formerly the Gold Coast and never the same as the ancient kingdom of Ghana from where they uh, took the name to give it. Now remember, the slave master, when he ravaged the area, he didn't have names for them because he wasn't indigenous. So all these things are mere concoctions, he will concoct names. If you look at names of almost every city in West, East and Central Africa, they are corrupted because he couldn't spell them right, but he had to work with whatever he had. So they renamed the Gold Coast to Ghana. You still see the Ivory Coast. The Slave Coast is where you have Nigeria today. So our interest is to show some of our so-called African-American brothers 
that Ghana is not where they are looking at today. And some people that claim that no, it is. We want to give them some assignment of what they can look out for to understand what is being said. Remember, these books are our own go-to. We can't depend on the slave master or his um, academic curriculum to understand what could have transpired then. So let us quickly reference a geographical survey of Africa, its rivers, lakes, mountains, production states, populations, etc. with a map on an entirely new construction and it was written by James McQueen and published in 1840. And there we see the following. And reading from within the highlighted portion, it says, Secondly, the land of Ghana, which extended from Lake Chad, which is Lake Chad today, on the east to the borders of the Niger, on the west, and from the great desert on the north to Lamlem on Mizra, 12 days journey to the south, where the land of Ghana was bounded by infidel countries. Interior Ethiopia is that portion of Africa now denominated by the Arabs of Africa, Sudan, Daklata. Thirdly, the great division named Malai or Mali, which extended from the land of Ghana on the east to Damlo, containing all the countries situated on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean on the west and from the borders of the desert to the countries reaching to the range of hills generally known on the Kong range on the south in this great portion of Africa and the first place of importance below Timbuktu was situated according to Batuta, the city of Kuku or Kaukau, the modern Gaul. And on the opposite side of the same page, we see where it says, in these we find one important theme, Takra or Takra the ignorance regarding the meaning of which has created much confusion in African geography. The term is very fully explained, and that too by a competent hand, Sultan Bello, in his geographical memoir or survey of Africa, see Appendix, Denham Travels, etc., page 158. The true word is Takra, and this appellation comprehends or is used to designate the center of northern central Africa or the middle portion of what is technically called Sudan from Darfur to the mouth of the Gambia inclusive. In it is included the following great divisions Darfur, Wade, Bagami, Bornu, Adamawa, Hausa, Zegzeg, Nafra. Nafra is Biafra so that's their name for it. If you read further you will find out what we're saying. So we want you to see so that you understand the game being played and note Sultan Bello there. So the Sultan of Sokoto today is a descendant of that Sultan Bello. So you understand the game. We are not asking you to believe us. We are asking you to go and read yourself. Read the materials yourself and tell us where you think the books are lying. It doesn't matter if you dismiss them as being written by Europeans. You have to also remember that it was the same Europeans that freed the Negroes from the brutal slave raids of the Arabs and Babas and Tuaregs and all that. So you have to bear this in mind. So going further, it says Konofa, Jacoba, Gomon, Moshe, Sange, Bambara, Melai, which we think should be Mali. No research done, you can research it yourself. Taurut, Futa, and Damlo on the coasts of the Atlantic where Christians come in ships to trade. Notes where Christians come in ships to trade. So what do they trade on? As they also do to a port on the ocean in Malai. Besides these, there are several other minor states as noted in the map and which will be more specifically alluded to hereafter. So our interest is that the people that think Ghana of today is the same as the ancient kingdom of Ghana we want them to go and conduct their research. We just don't want you to believe somebody who has been lying to you from the beginning of time till today. So just conduct basic research. That's all you need to do. And then you can come back and tell us, yes, that it is the same Ghana. And then we take it from there. That's all we challenge you to do. So let's look at the map briefly. So here is a modern day map of the area in question. The description of Ghana that you saw and where it was bounded by and all that, does it look like what you are seeing in this map today? The answer is certainly no because it was somewhere around Lake Chad and you see where Chad is. 
you see where the lake is very close to where nigeria and lake chad meet but they are telling you today that the same ghana is now somewhere in the gold coast you need to bear this in mind that the negroid group are being used by the slave masters they are not very intelligent sorry to say but that's how the slave master put it that they are very pliable that's why they use them so whatever they are told remember it's only a fool that you will come and say his forefathers did something as heinous as capturing and selling people and he believes you accepts it and very proudly says it around whereas the slave master is busy distancing himself from doing it himself so you understand how their mental capacity is how low it is but they are proud to say oh no it is us we did it yes we sold your forebears we're strong something that is so shameful something they should abhor but they are proud to say that shows you the level of mentality because they are intellectually very poor that's why and the slave master knows this and on a side note and from the same book we see where it says the real negro race and who remain unconquered by the mohammedan arms and unconverted to the mohammedan faith were from six to eight centuries ago driven into this portion of africa where the very high mountains and native forests which run east and west in the parallel of nine degrees to ten degrees north latitude have hitherto sheltered them from the incessant attacks of the fanatic more and the more fanatic negro mohammedan comfort so you see that when the negroes become mohammedan they become fanatic as well going further it says the contiguity also of these negro states with the atlantic from which they have been abundantly supplied for 250 years with powder and firearms by their trade with europeans has enabled them even more than their natural barriers and defenses to oppose the restless moors who are only enabled to obtain such supplies of the munitions of war to a limited degree by the caravans across the great desert from the shores of the mediterranean to this cause chiefly is it owing that this portion of africa has hitherto escaped from the mohammedan faith and from the mohammedan yoke note mohammedan yoke a circumstance in one point to be regretted because wherever that faith and that yoke have been introduced an end has been put to all those groveling superstitions and human massacres and human sacrifices to which we have alluded now we ask you the people talking about human sacrifices and human massacres wipe out an entire village to capture slaves and they are talking about human sacrifices how many people do you think negroes sacrifice none these are all lies they cooked up in order to justify the atrocities of the slave trade which we shall show you in subsequent editions but this is a side note to show you how africa or the negroes were subjected to whatever thing they are going through to today and they are st it's still going on but subliminally but let us move forward and go into our real topic of the day now remember the negro likes to hear god said god sent us everything you bring provided you attach god as in the creator of heaven and earth to it the negro has to accept it he doesn't question you at all so let us quickly reference the new testament in the original greek the text revised by brooke force westcott dd and fenton john anthony hart dd american edition and it was published in 1881 and there we see the following and we see sources of the text of the New Testament and it says the original orthographs of the apostolic writings are lost beyond all reasonable hope of discovery and are not even mentioned by the post-apostolic authors as being extant anywhere or as having been seen by them. They perished probably before the close of the first century with the brittle paper then in ordinary use, the Egyptian papyrus in bracket like all other ancient writings with the exception of a few that were accidentally preserved in egyptian tombs and mummies or under the lava of vesuvius at herculaneum and pompeii god has not chosen to exempt the bible by a miracle from the faith of other books but has wisely left room for the diligence and research of man who is responsible for the use of all the facilities within his reach for the study of the bible he has not provided for inspired transcribers 
any more than inspired printers, nor for infallible translators, any more than infallible commentators and readers. He wastes no miracles. He desires free and intelligent worshippers. Note this very well. Free and intelligent worshippers. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The Bible in its origin and history is a human as well as a divine book and must be studied under this twofold aspect. It is the incarnation of God's truth and reflects the divine human person of Christ to whom it bears witness as the Alpha and Omega, as the way, the life and the truth. Even if we had the apostolic orthographs, there would be room for verbal criticism since they, like other ancient books, we are written as a continuous whole, without accents, without punctuations, without divisions of sentences or words, without titles and subscriptions, without even the name of the author unless it was part of the text itself. Now, we challenge you that believes that somehow Deuteronomy 28 is what it was before the manuscript or after the manuscript has allegedly been destroyed. This book was in 1881 or thereabout. We challenge you to go back to the original source of that verse, that chapter, wherever they got it from, before they translated it to English. Do basic research and see if it's exactly what was there that they put in Deuteronomy 28 before you start believing lies just because they said God said. Now remember, the Negro likes to hear God said, God sent us, and that is what they have learned to deceive him with. Even if you go to Nigeria, for example, you will hear the Sultan of the Fulani, now called Sultan of Sokoto, he will say God put us together, even when we know that the countries were created by the Europeans, mainly the British. So you understand what we're saying, don't just depend on what they tell you, look for what they are not saying, combine what they are not saying with what they are saying, you will get the truth, or look for the truth yourself. That's why the Most High blessed all of us, individually and collectively, with the brain, the intellect, to be able to discern, to be able to understand, to be able to reason. So don't wait for other people to reason for you. They will only take advantage of you. Because they said God said, doesn't mean God actually said. It means they want to deceive you. Because if you have the Bible that you can study yourself, and somebody is coming from nowhere with doctrines that are totally unrelated to what the book is saying and you are believing or another person comes with the Quran to tell you the same thing and you believe, don't you have your own brains? Didn't the Most High bless you with the best brains anyone can think of? Why not use it for once? So here is a sample of some of the pages they allegedly took whatever they gave you in English or French or whatever language you have it in today came from. But you see a little sample of it where they say specimen of the Codex Sinaiticus containing 1 Timothy 3.16 and we challenge you to tell us how you know that what is written here, you see the sign, um, gibberish, meaningless as far as you don't know the language, how you know that what they wrote there is what this thing is saying. Just put it in the comment section that this is how you know. Because now you have to know, either you know that it is correct or you have to trust whoever is writing it as being honest when you have seen that all they have done is to lie to you. How many times more will they lie to you before you learn to use the brains the Most High blessed you with? Your intellect that is higher than most others but you have been belittled by the fact that you look up to someone else as a slave. To guide you you look up to someone else as a slave to teach you even when you have the highest academic degree you have all the education you have all the training you have all the ability to read and write you still can read things for yourself you wait for the pastor in the church that is looking for your money or the imam that is working for the arabs to teach you when you can read and study things yourself at least study it yourself and say yes this thing is correct this is not correct Read the book even and then go back to the original manuscript and check if you can find what they are writing there in what the manuscript is saying. So here is also a sample from Codex Vaticanus containing Mark 16, 3 to 8, taken from Mr. Bajan's photograph of the whole page. So our challenge to you is for you to go and look for the original manuscript from where they allegedly wrote what they gave you and see if what is there is the same as what they are telling you. That's all. 
you don't need to do anything all you need to do is check if what they are saying is the same especially your deuteronomy 28 you just go look for the original manuscript where they translated it from do a little work yourself don't bury your talent in the ground go and do a little work yourself a man like you went and did that prepared it took it to the publisher and they printed it and you believe the most high said yes very simple but then do one little thing go to the original manuscript from where the man who translated it into english got it from and try to do the translations yourself even if it takes you three months to learn the coding whatever they wrote it in to understudy it that will be better for you than allowing yourself to be deceived by someone who you know has always been lying here is something of interest but we're gonna use it to buttress some of our points it says it's an autobiography of reverend william king written at intervals during the last three years of his life that's autobiography of reverend w king january 6th 1892 you note how the type fonts are that should be near what the printing would be at that time but at least our interest is to show you something that gives us an idea of what they did and how they got what you read today including your deuteronomy 28 how they got it from on top the page it says seven years servitude of the slave in order to prepare him for freedom this was called the apprentice system the master had no power to sell or to abuse the negro he was considered as a apprentice putting in his time and at the end of seven years he would be free but a difficulty arose from the system of apprenticeship which had not been anticipated the slaves got it into their heads that they were free that the government had paid for them to their masters and that the planters were still holding them in bondage for their own benefit this feeling became general on the plantations the negroes refused to work and the masters had no power to force them they were to be treated as apprentices and not as slaves now the reason we brought you here is that this is when they tried to align the atrocities with what the bible is saying remember we had told you that the most high never wrote any book and he never said he wrote a book so what they do is that they walk from answer to question and we'll give you an example if you were in school and you conducted experiments on the so-called acceleration due to gravity which they say is 9.8 or something along those lines there is a way you manipulate your figures to arrive at that 9.8 when you swing the pendulum you move it and you time it and all that after you are done you do your calculation and you discover that you are like 11 point something and you start reducing the timings manually what they are doing is something akin to that they work with the script that this is what we are doing so that it will look like a prophecy not that it is a prophecy they work towards that answer now you notice that they try to tweak the slave trade to be this what you have in the bible where the negro become free after seven years now if you go to a place like nigeria if you go to what is called the south east and south south till tomorrow morning they have this apprentice system they've always had it they can't explain how it is but if you were to ask anyone they will tell you that you serve your master for seven years that's the year of jubilee now because the negroes did not have these things documented the way the slave master did obviously what they did was they came lifted whatever the negroes were doing smuggled into to whatever and brought it back with a lot of lies so now nobody knows the correct thing so now you see obviously they had the mind to free the slaves after some seven years but because of greed they couldn't implement that they now went back to the narrative of 400 years now remember if the so-called israelites had left egypt after 400 years which we read about in their book how come it's still being repeated today so is it history or future now if you notice they tell you that oh no us is spiritual egypt there were negro slaves even till tomorrow morning being sold in the middle east there were those sold to europe there were those sold to Turkey, to Middle East, Asia, and all that. So what are their own? Even before the 20 or uh, 1619 that they keep propagating. So again, we tell you today, even if they say God said, even if they come with, oh, God sent us, try and use your own brain. That's why the Most High created it. Everyone now knows that to deceive the Negro, all you need to do is to attach God to whatever lie you come with, and he will believe. 
So let us reference the Edinburgh Review or Critical Journal for January 1882 to April 1882 to be continued quarterly and it was published in 1882 and there we see the following. So we see from the highlighted portion as to the religion of the country it is so fraught with good sense and absurdity that we are at a loss how to describe it. The fetish of which we shall speak explicitly in another place is worshipped here as in all the other countries on the western coast of Africa. They take everything that seems extraordinary for a god and make offerings to it. These sometimes they consider in a sub subaltern capacity acting as mediators between men and the great god of whom their ideas are less gross and unworthy to god they ascribe the attributes of omniscience omnipresence omnipotence and invisibility they believe that he actuates everything and governs the world by his providence our question to you is their belief in god is he not stronger than whatever you have them bring with their book today we ask you when you look at the image of the cross or you look at the box in Mecca, or you look at the image of uh, the virgin mary they show you in church compare it with this attribute of god being omnipresent omnipotent and invisibility which is the real attribute of god but you see how they turn it around that no that one you believe is paganism while the one they are bringing you is the real thing so we challenge you to conduct basic research on your own and tell us where you think these books are lying you see that they studied the people very very well and notice that they said they are at a loss how to describe it because they have no understanding of the truth of the creator of heaven and earth more than the negroes did now remember for the records their their writings show that the negroes were living in near paradise before they came so they had things in abundance contrary to the suffering you see in africa today which we shall show you how they engineered it anyway but let us move forward the negro likes to hear god said god sent me everything you just attach god to it if you have a product that you want to sell even if it is gone just attach something that relates to the most high to it you will see them buying it even when it is deadly you will see them buying it if you doubt what we're saying give it a try that's what the world has discovered so everyone now uses it to enslave the negroes because he is very very religious he likes his god but the problem is he doesn't know his god he doesn't stick with his god he easily follows other people's gods the moment they bring it he leaves his creator and follows those other people's gods and they deal with him please here is a quick correction the material we just referenced on the religion of the negroes or western part of africa is actually from an universal history from the earliest account of time compiled from original writers by the authors of the ancient path volume 16 and it was published in 1861 so the edinburgh review is the next one we're gonna cite we just can make the correction because those that pay for the voiceover may not want to pay for the extra time to correct this so please note the last referenced material is the what you see on your screen while the edinburgh review is the next thing we're going to look at thank you so we see from the universal history book we just showed you the cover that the kingdom of biafra or biafra that this kingdom situated on the east of benin on the west of and divided by a chain of mountains from midra extends on the south to the fourth degree of north latitude the natives are the most addicted of all negroes to the to and infatuated with magic imagining themselves capable of causing rain thunder and lightning and therefore worship with great zeal and sacrifice their children to the devil but our interest is to show you that wherever the negro is it's all about his creator he is extremely religious and that is what the world has discovered and that is the way they enslaved them in all cases so you see them now telling them today that it is the creator that ordained slavery for them which is the same technique they used to keep them in bondage and still using it till today so you see while they abandoned the original creator they were worshipping 
they are following the slave master's crea- uh, God and at the same time accepting that the slave master ordained slavery for them. Now, notice that this same slavery is not in Islam, but they claim it's the same God. So you see the difference. So each of the slave master's uh, foot soldiers come with their own lie. But the only way to debunk their lies is to focus on the creator because his message has to be one. It can't be saying one thing here and another thing the other way. No, these are all foreign gods. But let us now move forward to the Edinburgh Review we talked about earlier. And from the Edinburgh Review, which we cited earlier in error, we see the following. And this is from an ecclesiastical relation of Negroes, speech of Robert L. Downey in the Synod of Virginia, November 9, 1867, against the ecclesiastical equality of Negro preachers in our church and their right to rule over white Christians. Now remember, the Negroes own a God. Remember we read that as at 1714. Now the same Negroes are now begging to actually come and carry the message of a foreign God. You can see how ironic this is. So let us see what it tells us that. Let us now briefly review the points established. The universality of gospel blessings to all believers does not carry with it a universal right to church office, as was asserted. God had often restrained the latter on grounds of class or natural distinction where he has considered the former. God has given to his church description to restrain it for similar cause in suitable unrevealed instances. The church has in every age exercised this lawful discretion for her own general edification. The case of the Negroes among us presents just such an instance where the wise exercise of the scriptural description is proper. For as I have shown, the setting up of black men to rule white Presbyterians is on every account not for the church's true edification. Here it may be added, it would be as mischievous to the souls of the blacks as it is odious to the whites. For instance, how many Negroes are there in all the South who would not, in an era of unhealthy excitement and approaching strife of races like this, be utterly spoiled by this elevation? How many would return to the end their sobriety, their modesty, their sound description under a condition so utterly foreign to their previous experiences. So you see what we're talking about. And on the opposite page, you see where it says that then as the second alternative, I would assist and encourage them to build up a black Presbyterian church, ecclesiastically independent of and separate from ours, but in relation of relations of friendship and charity. To this end, I would extend to them ministerial and missionary labor liberally. I would aid them in church building. I would provide schools separate from our own for training black men to be pastors of black churches. And I would, if necessary, give ordination to enough men to form a separate presbytery when enough can be found possessed of constitutional qualifications. But I would make no black man a member of a white session or presbytery or synod or assembly, nor would I give them any share in the government of our own church, nor any representation in it. It is confusion. So now we challenge you to tell us how you will be begging to worship another person's God, which benefits him, not you, because there is nothing you benefit from serving other people's gods. If you doubt us, put it in the comment section and tell us what the Negroes have benefited from either their worship of the Arab deity or the european one whichever one you choose just tell us which one he has benefited from the only reason you see it as something worth doing is because you threw away your own creator that you were worshiping before they came and embraced theirs where you are now begging to be taught to be allowed to worship him which is most unfortunate but let us move forward. So let us reference a school history fourth reader grade of the Negro race in the United States with a short introduction as to the origin of the race. Also a short sketch of Liberia by Edward A. Johnson, LLB, and it was published in 1894. There we see the following. Here again we see where it tells us that Negroes sprang from Ham, which we know is a lie. His descendants were not all black people. The color of the ancient Egyptians ranged from olive 
to dark brown and in their features they seem as nearly related to the caucasian as to the negro type so in all this the narrative was trying to explain the origin of the negroes now remember in all these things the book from where they are picking this information from wasn't written by negroes negroes had no hand in it they just wrote it themselves however they wrote it wherever they got it from now remember if you think that oh they were right there was this big flood that took away everybody and then it started from harm then you need to tell us who wrote it because it's either the book would have been destroyed before the flood or it was available during the flood or it was written after it and we need to know who if he was inspired we need to know who was inspired that wrote it because it couldn't have been written by shem ham or jeffet so if there were only three people at that time where was this book obviously it wasn't written so whenever it was written we need to know when so now you are telling us that the history of the negroes is contained in a book they were not even allowed to read at that time because it was a capital of friends to teach a slave, a Negro slave to read at that time. So we wonder where they could have known this their history from, if not for <laughs> the slave trade anyways. But then let's just move forward with some of the things they had to say, this author had to say about the Negroes. And further down we see where it says that the Africans were once a great people. It's shown by their natural love for the fine arts. But then we go further down where it says their wonderful regard for truth and virtue is surprising and fixes a great gulf between them and other savage peoples. So you notice, remember the author might write African but we know he's talking about the Negro. So you notice where he says their truth, their regard for truth and virtue is surprising and fixes a great gulf between them and other savage peoples now you notice if you doubt what we're saying just do a personal investigation yourself you will discover that while the negroes in africa are looking for ways to better everybody's well-being the slave masters the slave lords their foot soldiers are more interested in subjugating the negroes so you will see they will either go to war they want to starve the negroes they are engineering everything possible to enslave the negroes all you need to do to find out where the negroes are is to look for where the subjugation is going on that's very simple to do so it goes further to say that they learn readily and unfortunately it is too often the case that evil teaching is given them by the traders who frequent their country so you see that some of the things the negroes are learning are evil teaching from the slave masters and their food soldiers this is why if you were to go to a place like nigeria if you pick up the nigerian constitution you will discover that it is made in the image of the british it's purely a slave masters game but they now use their foot soldiers to ensure that it is enshrined there so when you go to school as a negro child be it in africa or in europe or anywhere you are taught things that are denigrating to the negro race that is their technique which we shall continue to show you now he goes further down to say long years spent in the most debilitating climate on earth and violation of divine law made the african what he was when the slave trade commenced in the 16th century but his condition was not so bad that he could not be made a good citizen so you see it was the slave trade that turned the negro to some of what they do which we shall show you how they engineer those things you know what they do is like beating a child and asking that child not to cry they engineer hunger knowing that with hunger comes crime so the moment the hung the the negro is starved in sub-saharan africa then there will be the crime there will be the violence that comes in and then they'll say oh the negroes are very violent that's their game so you go further you see where it tells us that some quotations from leading writers on the negro it says the sphinx may have been the shrine of the negro population of egypt who as a people were unquestionably under our average size three million buddhists in asia represent their chief deity buddha with negro features and hair so you see what we're talking about so all they needed was to turn the narrative around and turn good to evil and evil good and the negro became demonized then they need to sell that 
demonization to the Negro as well. And all they needed to do was to attach God to it. So the Negro now believes that the creator of heaven and earth could have ordained him to be a slave. And you see the game. Here again, we see something of interest and you see British hatred to Negro freedom thus made itself plain in the New England slaves. And a few years later, when England fired her guns to subdue the revolution begun at Lexington, the slave population enlisted largely in the defense of the colonists and thus the Negro slave by valor, patriotism and industry began to loosen the chains of his own bondage in the Northern Territories. Now we challenge you to investigate something like the Nigerian Biafra War. That was where British hatred of the Negro manifested as well. Now remember, most of the Negroes embraced the European religion and despite that, the weapons, the logistics, the training were provided by the British where the Negro children were starved, they justified it and if you see everything they do today, they make sure that that hatred is so visible. You may not know this if you are the type that still sees Africa as one people. They are where the Negroes live. And if you were to study the Nigerian Biafran War, you will see that it was exactly like a case of an escaping slave. The same way they amputate, they hung the Negroes to as a deterrent from other slaves for other slaves not to try escaping. That's exactly what they did. So if you watch, you can also study what is going on there today. If you are so-called African American, one of the things you got to find out is what is happening there, who is who. Remember, those weapons are not made by anybody there. You should be asking yourself, if these countries claim they are poor, who is providing them with weapons that cost more than your annual salary? That should be your question. And if they are getting those weapons, somebody is giving it to them and it is not free. So it is incumbent on you to find out what is going on instead of dwelling on the idea that the almighty creator of heaven and earth in his glory could have ordained you to be a slave. This is impossible. So if you know where you think it's possible, tell us. But don't come to us with the idea that the Most High could have published a book. He did not publish any book. At least we started this series by showing you where they wrote that the original manuscript, they lost it as at 1881. So if they lost the original manuscript and also told us that those that wrote it didn't even cite the original, that should begin to tell you what you need to know. Let us just round up by looking at some of the little things they did back in what was Negro land and Guinea. From the same book, we see how long the Negroes have been on, under the bondage. Because remember, they believe that the Negro was created to be slaves forever. So when you hear some people say today that the slave trade is still going on, don't doubt them. Just seek to understand why they are saying it and they will show you. What you don't understand is the fact that the foot soldiers of the slave masters and especially in West, East and Central Africa are still being used the same way they were used. Remember, they are not very smart. The slave master recorded that as well. So because they are not smart, when they are used, now ask yourself, an adult, for example, is given a gun to go and kill his brother or his supposed brother and he goes to do it or go to kill somebody, make children orphans. You see the number of orphans in Sub-Saharan Africa. You see the number of widows, number of widowers. And you are telling us that those that are doing the killing have sense. If you think they have common sense, please put it in the comment section and tell us how such persons could be considered as sensible in life. Now, if you see things like Boko Haram, it has nothing to do with the actual um, terrorism the way you know it. These are engineered, controlled terror group. It is not about the Negro per se. It is about the slave master using the, the fools they have there to engineer such things. Now ask yourself, each weapon, each bullet, each shot, each person they kill, the slave master smiles to the bank. So it is incumbent on you to investigate such things and understand why those wars are going on there. It's because the slave master knows who he has in the fools he has there. So those fools, all they do is they give them weapons and they start killing people. That's all they do. Now, if you show them this, what they're going to tell you is how to kill those that are exposing their stupidity to the world because that's the only thing they understand. So if you see here, it tells us that the progress from slavery to freedom was very slow. 
For thousands of years, Negroes had been sold from the eastern coast of Africa to Arabia, Persia, India, and Barbary states, Egypt, and Asia Minor. After the discovery of America, they were sold from the western coast of Africa to the West Indies, Brazil, to all the American colonies which were under the control of the British, French, Spaniards, Dutch, and Portuguese. Those were the slave raiding countries, which you can see. About the middle of the 15th century, the Portuguese began the Western African slave trade by selling Negroes to the Spaniards, and soon thereafter, the Spaniards introduced the children of these slaves into their colonies in the West Indies. It was not long after this introduction of Negro slaves into the colonies of the newly discovered Western world until the slave trade was eagerly engaged in and none of the governments of the old world enter whatever but our interest is for you to see how long the negroes have been under bondage so unless you identify who and who were negroes you won't understand what's going on in africa for you to better understand it you will notice that even some of the so-called african americans celebrate let's say land seizure in uh, south africa news or that land will be returned to some blacks in south africa but they will overlook or pretend not to see mass murders in West Africa done by the slave masters foot soldiers. That's exactly how the slave trade happens too. So they will pretend not to see if the uh, uh, Fulani headsmen murder 300 people, they, won't, they will pretend not to see it. But they will celebrate one news that says, oh, one unknown Ghanaian man has apologized for the slave trade. That tells you some of the things you probably need to investigate about what is going on there. You will see the so-called Nigerian army. They will cite what Trump said. He will consider throwing stones at the army as um, an attack or as bullets. You will see the, the Nigerian army, which was a slave raiding terror group, will massacre innocent people. And I say that because they threw stones and cite what Trump is saying. That should tell you how big or how deep their intellect is. That should tell you exactly how big their brains are. You don't need to go too far. You don't even need to conduct the research of a, let's say, bachelor's degree thesis to understand who the enemies are. So when they add God to whatever thing they are saying, don't believe them. Look for the lie you would have seen the light to it because one question you have to ask each and every one of them is where did they see god remember whether the slave master the arabs the whoever none has ever seen god before so if you look at the book of mormons you look at the bible you look at the quran it's all what people wrote there none has ever seen god before so the same way they read it and come to you with some other things that are not there. It's the same way you too should read it and make your own interpretations and choose what to believe and what not to believe. Not just believing them simply because they said that God sent them or God said. God didn't say because they didn't say him either. So if they read it, at least at best, ask them to show you where they saw what they are telling you. Let us quickly reference adventures and observations on the west coast of Africa and its islands. Madre, Canary, Biafra, and Cape Verde Islands, and it was written by Reverend Charles W. Thomas, and it was published in 1860. And there we see the following. And you can pause the video and read the entire thing yourself, but our interest is where it says, To these in 1792 were added a few hundred free Negroes from Nova Scotia. Many of these poor creatures died in the acclimating fever but their places were supplied by thousands of Africans taken from slave ships captured by English men of war. For at this time, the English had become almost as zealous in capturing slavers as they had previously been in supplying them. So we challenge you to research something like the Asiento. The British were biggest suppliers of slaves. We showed you that this, the British had hatred for Negroes. So the essence is for you to understand what is going on, but yet, People will go to church. If you go and look at the prayer book of the Anglican church, for example, you will see that they have to pray for the British. So you go to church, you are praying to the creator to bless the oppressor. You see the thing, but there is nothing that you will be doing that you even cry out in hunger, in pain, in sorrow, that they will lend you a helping hand or give you a hand to hold. They will rather add to it. 
So we challenge you to look at places like Nigeria, look at places like Cameroon, Ambazonia, Biafra. Look at those places and ask yourself what is going on. For those who are planning to make it back to Ghana, ask yourself why a people you consider brothers, one will be fighting for freedom from another and the weapons are supplied by the slave masters. In totality, this is not like they supply some, they supply all and they ensure that there is ready supply of bullets and guns. And the Nigerian army was the slave raiding terror group used to capture and sell the slaves which we have challenged you to investigate and post it here that is a lie and tell us how and where you find it. At least you can start by trying to find the first few people that were recruited into the army in 1863. That will begin to tell you what we're talking about. Very simple things to do. Let us round off by referencing Journal of an Expedition up the Niger and Shadar rivers undertaken by Magritte Goled, Esquire, in connection with the British government in 1854 by the Reverend Samuel Crowder with map and appendix and it was published in 1855. Now remember we told you that Crowder was an Iba and not necessarily a Yoruba because Yorubas are foot soldiers to the slave pastors which we shall show you in subsequent editions. But now let us see how they sold the religion to the Negroes in that time so that you understand what we're talking about. And from the highlighted portion, Oyigo, the chief, was killed and the inhabitants taken prisoners before they were aware that any hostility was intended against them. Hence, all the dependent towns and villages were deserted and the people fled for refuge to the island in the Shadar and to the other side of the river. Ama Dogo, the Fulani war chief, offered the condition of paying 100 slaves as an annual tribute and the king said he feigned compliance with these terms till he had recovered as many of his people from them as they were able to ransom and that he would never go to Panda again but when the dry season comes will remove to the other side of the river and only inhabit Yamaha in the rainy season when it is difficult for the Filanese to get at them. He said if they complied and paid 100 slaves one year in the next they would require 200 and where were they to get them and that they detested war trade being their chief employment i asked him whether in case trade should be established with this country he would like his people to be taught god's book so you see how they were bringing their religion remember the people that are bringing this religion were the same people that are providing the weapons with which the fulani carry out the slave raids or razias as they used to be called so you understand their game and how to worship God as we do in the white man's country for it was these two things together which made England great and that they would bring peace and prosperity to any country who received and embraced them so notice the same people that provide the weapons the same people that buy the slaves are the same people bringing this gospel that will bring them prosperity now look at what negro land looks like today is there any prosperity that you see there this book was being written in 1855 so if there is no prosperity today when will that prosperity come so you see going further it says i told him that the same thing was proposed to the chiefs of abo to the Atha of egara these are all negro communities their sovereign and to Maha Mahama, king of Hamarua, respecting the Bible or Juku people, and that they were all willing to trade, and that their people should be taught God's book. I wanted therefore to know what he would say to it also. He replied that trade was their chief employment, and that he was very desirous that war should cease, that his people might trade and be taught God's book, he wished us many blessings and long life from the God whom we worship. So now you see they were bringing their own God, not what the Negroes worshipped because the Negroes worshipped the creator of heaven and earth. Now one of the ways to see the, tre the treachery in this is the fact that the weapons used for capturing them as slaves, waking wars on them, were provided by the same people bringing this gospel. And remember, it is the same people that actually do the buying of the slaves. So the people they give the guns, capture the Negroes for them, 
they pay them or whatever they do and then supply them with more guns and then come from behind to provide you with a gospel they now claim will stop the slave rates. So you see what we're talking about. So in conclusion, we see where they introduced Jesus Christ to the Igbos who worshipped Chuku at that time. They now introduced him as the son of Chuku, which was their original God, as in this God you are worshipping, we are now bringing the son to him or to you. So he said he frequently repeated the names Opera Chuku, which means first son of Chuku. Chuku was the name of their God at that time son of god son of god as i did not wish to tire him out i left my discourse fresh in his mind so again you see how they brought it they never brought it as these people you are worshiping idols they brought it as this thing you have been doing is the same thing this is an add-on to it this is what you need to do now all they needed to do with the first son of uh, god was to stop the negroes from offering sacrifices now if you were to go to leviticus just take time and study leviticus chapters 1 2 3 4 and 16 and you will see that all they needed to do was to stop them from those sacrifices which they believe were very powerful and if you read exodus 20 24 you will see what that verse says now remember there is a school of thought that said they went and studied what the Negroes were doing and then put them in the book and added a lot of lies to it, which we hope to research on and we will come back to you with them. We have had a very long video and we thank you very much for listening because here we come to the end of this edition and we do look forward to your own research. Find time to research. Do not believe us. Do not believe anything we have said look for the materials referenced and study them yourself that way you will understand what the people that were there when these things were brought were saying we thank you once again for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research peace